I like to work on impossible problems to find out what makes them impossible, because if you find out what makes a problem impossible, you find out where its leverage points are to change what the world is like to make it feasible to solve. My name is Dr. Max Liberon, and I study plastic pollution. I was researching garbage crises through history and how people overcame them when they thought there was an insurmountable, impossible to solve problem. So 1880s New York City garbage. Couldn't be done, right? Then it was done. Someone said, oh, are you gonna look at plastic pollution in the oceans as one of your case studies? And I said, no, because it's actually impossible to solve. And I thought about that for a few days and changed my entire career trajectory, so I only work on that problem now. Clear is a couple of things. It's a scientific laboratory where we study marine plastic pollution, but it's also an incubator for feminist and anti-colonial methods. Uh, and those two things come together and we form a research collective. All research, no matter what kind of research, has values. The thing about CLEAR is that we are very self-conscious and reflexive about our values. And instead of choosing, say, prestige and giant grants as our main goals, we choose humility and equity and a commitment to land as our goals. We're looking at plastic in snow, in water, in fish, in birds, in everything they eat, in air, on their shorelines, in their water. Just constant monitoring of plastic in the province so we can sort of see the shape of the problem. We created a bunch of accessible, do-it-yourself, kitchen tool sort of uh, surface water trawl. We made the Lady Trawl, which uh, is about $500 and smaller, and you can make it with things you find in your garage. And then we did Baby Legs, which is about $8, made with soda pop bottles and, and baby tights, and like kids can use it. And it still collects data. We want to change the future of science. How science is done by who? So open access science, open access tools, humility. We have more trans and gender minorities in our lab than any other lab. We have indigenous folks, we have children, we have elders, right? Those folks making science is the sort of change we're looking to make with tools that they can use when they don't have grants and don't have a university. Everybody's a researcher. Children are researchers. They learn about the world, they gather information systematically, they make theories about how the world works, they test them, and off they go, right? The main role of mentorship in the lab is teaching people about ways of being and ways of doing, so that no matter what they get off to, whether it's plastic pollution research, or government work, or teaching, or being a parent, they have skills about doing things in a good way. I set up what I would call sandboxes. So I lay out some parameters and then the students go in it and they do whatever they're going to do. They fail together, they succeed together, they work out the problems together. I don't teach content, I teach people how to be, how to problem solve, how to be humble. CLEAR operates on the premise is that everyone knows more than we do including undergraduates, including community members, including plastics themselves. And we're here to learn from them and to put all that knowledge on the table in a coordinated fashion so we can co-learn. We do not mobilize knowledge. We try and gain knowledge and say back what we have learned. We produce knowledge for people who have already asked for that knowledge. So the very first season that I came to this province and I looked in some cod for plastic because I thought that would be a good idea. So I called a community meeting in a fishing village to be like, what does this mean? Will this cause harm? And in that meeting, people asked me questions that I couldn't answer. Those became my research question for the next couple of years. I would then go back to those communities, present those results, and they would ask me new questions. And I'm always working on community questions. We have to listen and listen and listen. We then do what those folks say and tell us to do, and we give it and we say, is this right? It's a very different model of how knowledge flows. We don't own the data or the knowledge that we collect from Indigenous lands. Indigenous folks own that. We are temporary sort of custodians of that data, and we always give it back, and that is part of Indigenous law. Everyone, every culture, every age group, every gender, 
knows things and they know it from one perspective and not other perspectives. And that includes scientists who know things from one perspective and not other perspectives. There's a thing called feminist standpoint theory. And the very easy way to understand it is if you have an object, you can see it from this angle and maybe from this angle, but you need someone over here and over there and from all the different angles. And so by increasing the types of people and types of knowledge in a research endeavor, you can actually do science and other forms of knowledge better. How many plastics is often an end result, but it's the how we got there, that's where my stakes and my interests are. That's where the mentoring happens. That's where the, the co-learning happens. Are we changing how science is done? Are we securing different futures for what science might look like? That's the impact we're looking to have. If we also change plastic policy, Bingo. The impossible problem things. I like to work on impossible problems because it means I can find what makes it impossible and change it.